So what I was not able to show was the full setup process, which would be asking you uh, to select interests. Uh, in the beginning, when you created a Twitter account, <clears throat> it would then drop you into the timeline, the home screen right away, with no connections, and therefore Twitter would feel like a ghost town, because you have no connections. Facebook doesn't feel like a ghost town because you've got at least one friend there and there's stuff going back and forth and there's content. But in the beginning, Twitter, if you didn't have connections, you would have nothing to look at. So nowadays, um, if you sign up for the first time, it'll say choose some interests. And there you would see, for example, food and beverages. You would see sports. You would see celebrities, technology, etc. And that's just giving you an example of accounts to follow. So at the very beginning, it's going to suggest that you follow between 30 and 40 accounts. And that's simply for you to see content. Well, if you did see that screen, my recommendation for you would be to select interests related to what your business is about. If you never saw that screen or you just skipped through it, don't worry about it. We will have another screen to discover content. But if you're brand new and are presented with that, choose accounts that interest you or are related to your account. Remember I said later we'll talk about following accounts perhaps that are competitors so that we can get inspiration of what to tweet. So this particular account, just to show this, it's got a few stats, some tweets, some following, some followers. And uh, if yours is brand new, then you've got the basic account which has a little egg icon and a probably a blue background color there. Reminiscent of what we talked about in Google+, uh, and what will, what will be reminiscent of all the networks is, before you try to get followers, you need to have something to entice those followers. You're not going to get followers if you don't have any pictures, you don't have any biography, you don't have any tweets or videos or anything. So we're going to do some of the same things from, uh, from Google+, in that we want to set up our account as complete as possible and add a few tweets first, and then we'll go through the process of getting followers. So what I like to do in a brand new account is where, whatever screen you're at, at the very top right corner, you will see a tweet button, and next to it, if you're brand new, you'll see a little white egg, but if you've already set up your account, you'll see your logo. That's your profile and settings icon. If it's an egg, click on that, you get some uh, you get some settings here and click on view profile. It's the first item. Does every account have analytics on it? No. Good either. We'll talk about it later, but not every account has analytics on this menu, but you will, will still be able to access it even if it's not on the menu. Okay. But I'll get to that. So I'm looking at my profile. I've set it up a little bit. I have this logo and graphic. Bio. Well, if you're brand new, you don't have anything to provide people. So you want to click on the right side where it says Edit Profile. You'll then have the ability to change the header photo, a nice big graphic that catches your attention. If I've got Victor's Bakery, my local business, maybe I could have a photo of the building, maybe I could have a photo of all of the bakers, maybe I could have a full a photo full of pastries, whatever catches people's attention up on that top header photo. People use this also pretty interestingly. And this is what I'm saying about following accounts to get inspiration. Sometimes people, what they do is they put in some contact information. That would require a graphic software like Photoshop or Paint or whatever. Graphic software to make a graphic and write text on the graphic. We can't do it here without graphic software. But I've seen accounts that they have on the edge there, you know, contact us, phone number, email, website, also follow us on Instagram. That requires that you design that graphic in some graphic software. Hopefully also you choose a graphic that's interesting. This one doesn't really show up well on the screen. Is there a size limitation on here? There is. We have to look it up somewhere, it tells us, but um, okay. just about any, any size graphic will work. If it's too small, that's a problem, though. If it's too small, it'll have to stretch it to look good, but if it's big, it'll just shrink it to look good. Question? Um, I tried to upload a photo, and it 
you might have reached you might have reached the limitation of the size if it's like a photo straight out of your digital camera it might be too high quality if it's a high quality Photoshop graphic it might be too high quality so somewhere here it'll tell us what the limits are but if you can reduce it maybe by half that'll probably work then we have a profile photo or a logo this is where you would take uh, the, the time to put your company logo and the thing nowadays with most networks is that the company logo they all have a, some sort of company logo most of them are square some of them are round and I guess Twitter is in the middle round rounded square but the point is proportional if your logo is a horizontal logo it's going to either crop it or squeeze it into place and therefore look weird so whatever your logo is you might have to use a graphics software if it's horizontal you might have to use a graphics software to add some padding on the top to make it proportional to make it a square many times that happens it gets cut off and you need a square graphic it'll have a spot here for the full name again this is the one that's you that's not unique that anyone can change to anything whenever they want and it can be a name that's already used as well and it could have spaces and punctuation there is a limit to how long this can be whatever that much is so some space to write but I have had clients where their name doesn't fit and we had to get creative to shorten it down you know um, whatever fits in that spot on a different screen we can change the username so full name username full name is not unique username is unique another name that you sometimes see for the username is the at name because there's an at symbol there that's the Twitter at name when they say follow me at VMC Inc follow us at Victor's Bakery follow us at NBC well, it's that at name, the unique one, not that full name. That's not the full address. That's the address. I've then got a biography, 160 characters, and we'll talk about hashtags. But I've got some hashtags in this biography. In short, hashtags are keywords. Keywords that are active links that you can click on. So when we make a tweet, when we post a tweet, when we tweet a tweet, we will we will we'll add some hashtags. We'll see the value of them. But in this case, my company, this company here, is saying web design, photography, social media, marketing, consulting, e-commerce, San Diego-based. Follow for latest news and advice. So take that. You've heard of the term. You never have a you never have a check a second chance to make a first impression. When someone checks out your profile, that's one of the first things they'll see. So if you have nothing here, that you don't, they, you're already on the on a bad footing because people won't know what are you about. And some people, be, because we have so little time, short attention spans, they're not going to further check what is this company about. I can look at ten other Twitter accounts in five seconds. <clears throat> so take a moment to define what your company is about here in 160 characters. Think about it in terms of SEO and keywords, search engine optimization, I have here San Diego, marketing, I have hashtags, hashtags are these active keywords that do not have spaces, do not have special characters. So web design is two words, but in order for it to be an active hashtag, it needs to be run together. If I had written web design, web is now the hashtag and design is plain text. So now this is linked to others that use the hashtag web instead of web design. And again, hashtag will make more sense as we do it. So maybe don't think too hard about putting hashtags on the bio at the moment. But think about writing a sentence or two that really defines what your company, your profile is about. Yes? What if you have more than one business? You can create more than one Twitter account for is each of them. Is that the way to do it? It's not right or wrong. I know, for example, Whole Foods. I had a student come in here that he had inherited the Whole Foods uh, Twitter account or the whole social media thing on the Hillcrest um, Whole Foods um, spot. Uh, and what Whole Foods' parent company does is it gives a Twitter account for every regional Whole Foods. 
That's one way to do it. Another would be to simply have one Whole Foods account and all Whole Foods accounts from the U.S. tweet. So there's no right or wrong answer, but it, if you've got the people to manage each particular business, it might be useful to have separate accounts because each particular account might have a certain audience, certain demographics, certain products. Next we've got location, which uh, if it is a real location, you might start typing it and then can select a location. That's useful if you really have a physical location. Um, so people can find you on a map. Technically you can put anything you want here, such as Earth or other funny things. <laughs> you can write anything you want there, but if you do add in a real location, you will get found a little bit easier when people search. Is yes. there a limit on how many accounts you can have with your email address? Yes, you can only have one account per email address. So if you have a separate business, you have to have a separate email address for that business. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now if you have victor.com, most likely you can create contact at victor.com, sales at victor.com, right. and you know, feedback at victor.com, and therefore different email accounts for different Twitter accounts. Yes. Those hashtags are used when someone's searching for Google or through Twitter? Through Twitter, but um, tw uh, Google now has made a partnership with Twitter to start showing hashtags in Google as well. So, um, what's that? An active link, yeah. Keyword. So, uh, again, we'll talk about hashtags in detail a little bit later. But if you do use hashtags, they are now starting to be found more on Google as well. Is there a limit to how many you can have? Because it's gone over, it's gone over the, the limit. You there is a a, a space. Um, eventually, it should start to turn red to show you you're out of space. So I believe it's 160 characters. Thus far, it has gone horizontally. Uh, you might want to cut it back then. And it's just one line. That's a little odd. It might depend on your web browser. Um, oh, I see. Oh, I see. Then we have a spot for a web address. So there you can put in your home page or if you have a deeper link, such as, let's see here, vmcinc.net slash shop, that's my shopping cart screen. Or maybe I have a landing page, vmcinc.net slash buy now, dot html, whatever. Any active link here will work, and this is what people will see when they preview your profile on desktop or mobile or laptop. They will see that about you. So again, this is your, your, your first impression your first ch chance to make that first impression. So if it, you explain what you're about, location, um, address if, if necessary. And nowadays, they're asking for birthday. It's not required. Uh, it may be someday, but it's not required. And for birthday for a company, you can decide to do whatever you want there, that, that when the company was founded or when you joined Twitter. Um, I don't think it matters at the moment. This is pretty new. You can. Yeah, so if you're also on Instagram, you can put that address in here. It's not limited. They're not going to remove it because they're rival networks. But um, anything that will make sense for you, you've only got one link to add. Remember Google Plus, we had multiple links we could add. Here we've only got one. You can change a theme color to customize yourself a little bit more. I've got this blue here. Maybe I'll go with this blue. And now some of the highlights of the account will be that new color. Or I can, if I've got my own color code, because that blue is not the right color of my company, I can uh, add that there. You get your color code from software like Photoshop. Any of those changes that you made, make sure to save. Yes? Can I change um, the capitalization for the 
like I said a moment ago, on another screen we're going to see where to edit that. So that's one of the things we want to do. We want to personalize this and this and this to entice people to follow us. Can you tell me if you clicked on hashtag web design, what exactly? I'm going to talk about hashtags in more detail a little bit later. All right. Let's look at over here under the settings, because there's a few settings that I recommend for you. Click on your, your icon at the top here. If you're still the egg, you'll see an egg. But if you add your logo, eventually you'll have your logo. And this is profile and settings. So click on settings, and then we'll see here settings. <coughs> there, there will be a bunch of screens here of settings. I won't go through them all, but I'll mention a few. Uh, that would be important for you, such as on the left, our current subsetting screen is the account screen, and here's where you change your username. So that's the at name. That's the name that is actually the address. So if you've got business cards you're going to give, if you've got flyers and such, this is the address you want to give people. We saw that with BBC, it had a full name of BBC News World but then the at name was simply BBC News. So if you're telling people, find me as BBC World, you might not be as found, or, or you, people might not connect with you as quickly as if you had said, find me as BBC News, the at name. So if you can change that, capital letters and such, <coughs> no spaces, no dots, no symbols, you can use numbers and the underscore, but you can't make it as detailed as the full name. And you can change this whenever you want. You can change from one account, from one name to another name, and it'll check if it's available or not. So the problem is if you currently have a user name and you change it to something else and you want to go back to the other name, it may or may not be taken. You, you don't know. There's a link to the number of characters in the username. That's right. No, capitalization is just a visual thing for people to read your name, but for being found and such doesn't matter. Uh, let's see other items here. This is a personal preference, but nowadays you've also got videos embedded into tweets and uh, sometimes people don't like that, especially if they're automatically playing. So here's the option for you to turn off on your account to see other people's videos that they do not automatically play. Uh, if you don't care, then just leave it off. Um, you don't get sound until you click sound, but the videos will start to play automatically. If your company, let's say, is about alcohol, you have various restrictions, right? So you've got an option, mark media, I tweet as containing material that may be sensitive. Uh, so it would be better to be safe than sorry if your company is about a product or a brand or anything that, um, you know, has age restrictions and such. Conversely, you also have the ability to turn on or off uh, sensitive material. If other people have posted sensitive content that you don't want to see, you can turn that on or off for it to not show it. Any changes that you make, you want to click Save. And notice if after you uh, work on, after you use Twitter a bit and then decide this is not for me, um, you can then deactivate the account. Let's take a quick look at the security and privacy screen. This is how to keep your account more secure. There's login verification. These other, these other toggles here will make your account more secure, but they ask you to use a, your password and a phone number, or your password and an extra step on your app. 
So the thing nowadays about security, cybersecurity, is that really there's a balance between uh, convenience and security. So if you want a lot of convenience, you're going to have little security. If you want a lot of security, you're going to have little convenience. Myself, personally, I would rather have more security and be less convenient. I'm fine with that. Other people that I work with, they would rather be more convenient and less secure. And I yell at them all the time for that, especially with sensitive material. And in the middle, I don't know if really how much there is in the middle. It really is the opposites for the moment. So what I'm saying here is right now it's going to ask you to log in with a password. And if you turn on these other ones, it'll ask you extra steps. And you might think at the beginning, okay, great, I want to be safe. But then maybe eventually you're going to get tired of logging in twice, and then you're going to opt for more convenience, and you'll be less secure. So this is up to you to decide whatever you want there. On login verification, password reset require personal info. That's a little more secure. That way, um, if someone break, uh, breaks into your account, you're going to need more than just the basic password to change the password, it's going to need other security info. And then also this login code. The second one is more secure, but again, more hoops to jump through to access your account, which for the bad guys is good because then it makes it harder for them to get in. But if you have a hard time remembering your password and extra passwords and such, you're going to find it very inconvenient and then you'll decide what to do. You can only do one. It's trying to figure out one that I checked to add another press somewhere, so it's not something Another what? Under security login verification. There are three dots. Yes, you, you can only do one of each of these. But how do I get five of them to choose another? Can you see? These are the ones that won't be choosable until we do the, um, the help there, so I, I wouldn't worry about it just yet, but uh, you have to confirm your email address or you have to learn more here because they require a little bit more setup. Again, less convenience but more security. So we've got the ability to tweet, uh, protect your tweets. I don't recommend this for a company because then only those you approve can see your tweets. If you're going to be a public company trying to get more followers and to have that hoop for people to request to follow you, they're going to say, forget it, and it'll go elsewhere, and you won't get a lot of followers. These other settings are self-explanatory. Here we go. Let others find me by my address or phone number? Yes or no? This was the question earlier about, will people find me with that email address? If you turn that off, that helps protect you. Uh, I have mine off. On yours, is it on automatically or off? On. It's on. So you can turn those off and save, and then you'll uh, be a little bit more private and secure on the network. So that, I'm sorry, did you say login right and enter? Nope. I'm saying whatever you feel comfortable with to let your email address and phone number be visible on Twitter or not. This is that screen of a tailored Twitter based on recent website visits that was asked at the beginning and also promoted content. So you're not going to, if by turning these off, you're not going to not get ads, you're still going to get ads. But are you going to get tailored content? And then there's Twitter for Teams. Yes? So it says um, by recent website. So, so when the website puts a cookie, Twitter puts a cookie. They're going to use that. Twitter is going to use that to turn that. Yes. And if you do um, anonymous browsing, it won't get anything to trace. Exactly. Twitter for Teams, this is the one where you can let more than one person uh, manage this account. So this is allow anyone to add me to their team, only allow people I follow, do not allow anyone to add me to their team. I recommend the first one. Um, that way you can uh, make connections with different people to manage the account. A little bit more secure is only allow people I follow. So first you have to make a connection with them, and then they make a connection with you, and then you can access the account. 
So either, either of these first ones will work to let other managers into your account, but the one in the center is a little more secure. Well, like I said earlier, you want other people to manage your account, to help you manage the account, so you leave that those on and they'll be able to log in and add tweets with their password, yes. If you see here direct messages, is yours automatically on or off? Off, okay. Um, this is, uh, <coughs> let's say you uh, you want to use your Twitter like a lot of companies do, which is for a form of tech support. Um, this happens all the time. It happened with me. Uh, a couple of years ago, I took a trip to Las Vegas, and I flew Delta Airlines. I came back from Las Vegas to Los Angeles and then to San Diego. In the air, somewhere between uh, Nevada and California, I checked my, my email because I, I got the in-flight Wi-Fi, and I had gotten an email from Delta saying, your flight from Los Angeles to San Diego is canceled. So I'm up in the air between states, and I know that landing in Los Angeles, it's going to be trouble. So I start to tweet to uh, Delta up in the air, like, what's going on? And uh, why are you canceling the flight? And all of that. And so they started to talk with me on Twitter. And then we were able to send direct messages, private messages, back and forth to resolve this. Because they, they would ask, OK, what's your... Uh, what's your flight number or your you know social security to verify you and all of that if I was tweeting that out in public I would have put my social security number out in public so direct messages let you connect with people to send private messages that no one can see those direct messages happen when you connect with each other if I follow Delta and Delta follows me we can send private messages everyone has that ability this one, anyone will be able to send you a direct message at any point, even if you're not following them or they're not following you. And you may or may not want that. You may want for your customers to easily be able to message you privately. I'm having trouble with my product. I don't know how to do this. You know, please call me. Here's my phone number. You may want people to contact you as soon as possible. Turn that on. You may not want that because and then any crazy person can start contacting you via Twitter. So you leave it off. Yes. And uh, can we, if you send a direct message to someone, <coughs> can Twitter see what you're sending them? That's a good question. Um, <clears throat> I don't fully know the answer to that. Okay. In theory, I would say yes, because it's running on the Twitter server. But for example, these modern chat apps like WhatsApp and Viber and such pride themselves on that they never see your messages. I have to look that up. That's a good. That's a good question. I don't know if Twitter is privy to this messages. Yes. Yes. No. 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 Yes. I'm going behind you. Yes. I have a Twitter account, but I never use it. So, how can you tell it's a direct message as opposed to one on the computer? The best thing would be to go into this screen and and, and see what checkbox is on. Yeah, but like when you're receiving a message, and I want to, you know, like you said, I don't want to reply, thinking that. Everyone will see it. How do I put a direct message to that person? On the app itself and on the website, it will clearly mark it as a direct okay. message. It won't look like a regular tweet. In the old days, there was a lot of snafus that you couldn't tell. Is this a private or is it public? And people would put public things on, on accident. But now it should be pretty obvious in the app or on the website that it's direct. Yes? Can companies spam direct message, or do they have to do it one at a time? Is there any risk of getting a lot of spam? Well, or just an individual crazy person? A company could do it, but real companies like Coca-Cola and such are not going to do it because it's just bad PR. Right. That doesn't mean small companies won't do it. That doesn't mean, you know, underground, cheap Canadian meds com companies won't do it. Uh, so there is that possible... Um, you know, downside of it. Uh, so that's why they may get a choice to turn it on or off. If you change anything on this screen, go ahead and save. Don't forget to save at the bottom.
we'll look at one more uh, one more thing, and then we'll then we'll go on. There's a bunch of settings. You should look at them yourself. Pretty self-explanatory. Oftentimes, there's learn more if it doesn't make sense. Let's go over to email notifications. If you get the Twitter app, it's going to give you notifications, a pop-up or whatever your phone does to alert you that Twitter did something. Um, you can also get emails. So there's a bunch of options here. Email me when my tweets are marked as favorites. Email me when tweets I mentioned in or replied to are marked as favorites. Email me, blah, blah, blah. And yours, I believe, at the moment says tailored for you. Um, so here you can decide, number one, will I get emails? This whole screen is about getting emails. You're going to get notifications anyway on Twitter in this little notification screen or on the app. Getting more emails, you might think, I'm getting spammed by Twitter. Well, that just means you're getting a lot of activity on Twitter, and that's good. But if you're getting too much activity, you can turn off those emails. Or the difference between tailored for you and by anyone is, I kind of don't like tailored for you because as a company, I want to know about everyone that is interacting with me. Tailored for you really will only be those accounts that you've already have some connection with. So if I've only got three followers, but ten other accounts are tweeting at me and I'm not connected with them, I'm never going to get that email. This is Twitter. This Twitter is re this is really for Twitter trying to help people that are too popular. That I don't want to see so many messages from so many people. Oh, all my one million followers again. This is it being tailored to those that you have a real connection with. As a company, those of us, the little guys, I feel. Let me know anyone that, that connects with me, interacts with me. I want to know that. To follow them, to reply to them, to be social. But again, that ties into the web notifications. Don't, don't switch screens yet, but let me switch screens here to web notifications. Very similar here. You're going to get notifications in the app and on the web already, so maybe you don't want to get so many emails. Actually, this should be this. And then for emails, I'm getting too many at the moment. I'll just turn it off. And you can turn it on again later. And maybe if, maybe you do want to get some of these emails, but take a moment to look through them carefully because, for example, the ones I recommend you turn off, it's a personal choice, but you can decide. Email me with news about Twitter products tips on getting more from Twitter, participation in Twitter research, maybe these you want to turn off. Although, maybe leave them on and, and see what you get and then decide, nah, they're not really for me, turn them off. Email me top tweets and stories sent periodically. Again, I'm gonna try to keep uh, work life and home life separate and maybe all of these emails that I'm getting from Twitter all day long are not that useful, I can turn them off because I'll just deal with Twitter when I log into Twitter. And then take a quick look at web notifications, but same idea. And there's other settings. We won't have time to look at them all because we want to start to talk about getting followers and such, but any general questions at this point? Where does the web notifications show up? So if you're not logged in, it'll... No, you have to be, have logged, to be in. logged in. To and you'll see them up on that little bell. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the, little, the anatomy of Twitter is we've got three menu items at the top. Home, notifications, messages. That's where all your direct messages live. If you click on that, this will show you. I shouldn't show that, but if you click on messages, it'll show all the private uh, notification, uh, all the private messages you're sharing back and forth between accounts, your account to other Twitter accounts. The notifications screen will show you all the activity that happened. So, for example, in this case, some new followers, 
someone replied, someone favorited a tweet, someone retweeted. So this is where you'll see your activity and you'll see all and people you follow. I recommend keeping it on the all because again you might be contacted by people you have no connection with yet, like new customers. And if you keep this on people you follow, you're gonna say, why isn't anyone talking to me? Well, you don't have any connections yet. So I recommend keep notifications on all. Then when you have a million followers, maybe tailor it down so that you don't go crazy. We've got notifications and mentions. There is a difference, but we'll get back to it. You can look at it yourself. And then the home screen. Click on the home screen. This home screen then will show you the tweets that you have tweeted as well as the tweets of those connect of those accounts that you are following. And there's 45 that I'm following here. Their tweets show up here. Um, and you're gonna see the promoted, you're gonna see the ads here and there. Here's a Twitter survey. Here's something from Jose Huitron, TechCrunch, Clean Tech San Diego. So here's the example again. Their full name is Clean Tech San Diego. Their at name, their, their username is Clean Tech SD. Because maybe the whole name doesn't fit. TechCrunch is both TechCrunch as full name and um, username. Jeff Bullis got his name, Jeff Bullis. Guru. Guru was already taken, so they went with Guru underscore HQ. Mike Alton. He probably wanted Mike Alton, but he had to get Mike underscore Alton. Question? How do you unfollow someone? You're going to see on the same icon um, right here is the follow button. I'm currently following them because it's blue. You can click on it and it will unfollow. So it's the same button to follow and unfollow. If I go to a particular account, then it'll be explicit. I'm following them. Click to unfollow. How do you search for someone? There's this thing over here called search. But we'll do it together. We'll do it together in a moment to get more, more tips out of that because it, it, search is very powerful. But before we try to get followers, again, we need to entice people to follow us. So on my home screen, my statistic says I've, I've got 1,160 tweets following 45, 89 followers. So having zero tweets is not going to be very helpful to you. Because even if you've got your biography filled out in graphics and such, when someone visits your profile to check out, should I really follow BMC Inc.? There's nothing there. Why would people follow? So like I said on Google+, I believe I said three to five you want to add three to five posts, three to five tweets before you start to get followers so that it's not an empty account. So we'll do that. Um, let's do it this way. The home screen shows everything, but click on your profile and settings icon and click view profile. This screen now will then only show your tweets or retweets. But it'll show your stuff, not everyone else. So right now it's probably empty and Twitter might be suggesting, why don't you choose one of these tweets? Does it say just setting up my Twitter? And a couple other things. It might be suggesting what your first Twitter, your first tweet could be. You could choose one of those or write your own. The very first tweet was just setting up my Twitter. So it's kind of suggesting for you to write the classic first tweet. But you can ignore that and write your own your own tweet. And like on Google Plus, you want to tell people, uh, you always want to think about your, your content, your tweets, what's in it for people, why would they care, why would they favorite, why would they retweet, why would they follow, what's in it for them. So maybe on your very first tweet, you've got 140 characters, there's your limit listed right there. As you start to type, it'll go down. So. We're so happy to be on Twitter. 
follow us for um, exclusive VIP only coupons and events. So again, what are you using social media for? Trying to reach an audience, trying to buy, or trying to get people to buy your product, newsletter, um, donations. So this first tweet here is going to tell people at a glance what you're about. But don't rack your brains to make this the perfect tweet. Because again, this is, to some degree, all social media is short attention span content. Someone's going to see this and move on. They're following 10 other accounts, so they might see your tweet, but they're not going to really commit it to memory. So you've got 140 characters for your first tweet. This one's a text-only tweet, but I can easily attach a picture, add photo, I've attached a photo. It decreased my, my character count here. But I can add four of them, and it's still going to use the same characters. So I got four pictures, so kind of like a mini album. So this picture is going to, I mean, this tweet is going to have text and pictures. I could do that. Uh, we can also have video and sound. We'll see how to do that. For the moment, I'll keep it simple. Just text. We can add a location. That would be useful if I'm tweeting from the business and people see my tweet and want to buy the product, they can click and they'll see a map. They can go to the business. <coughs> we don't have any of that cool formatting like we had in, in um, Google+. We can't do bold, we can't do italics. It's just text, or pictures, or video. So then you can tweet. You can tweet, and then it goes out to all your followers. At the moment, you have zero followers, so no one really saw it. But you do want three to five tweets just to have some content. Right now, this went out, and potentially, my 89 followers on this account saw this, just like that popped up there. Potentially, 89 <coughs> people saw it. What's 1% of 89? 8.5%. Point zero eight nine one. So one person, let's say almost one person. So let's round up. Let's say one person does exist. So one person might have might actually act upon this. So that's that one percent. Uh, I had to think about it, yes. So you won't uh, you won't know though. Maybe one percent is being way too conservative. Maybe one percent is being way too liberal. I don't know. You're gonna need to try it. You're going to need to tweet. You're going to need to check your statistics and analytics, which we'll look at. But you won't know how effective you're being until you try it. That's why I'm saying three to five tweets to start off with. Question? You'd be surprised. <laughs> You'd be surprised. People are famous online and on Twitter for such a variety of reasons and so many reasons that are going to make you mad <laughs> that it's no, no point really to figure out why some are famous and some are not. People can get famous on Twitter for, for making dumb videos about them shooting Tabasco in their eyes, uh, <laughs> just giving great, ad great advice on realty, giving uh, photos of their charity work. You, you don't know. You have to, you have to try it. Uh, but obviously within the boundaries of what your company is. No, because then you're you're sort of you're not being genuine. You're not you're not getting followers that really matter. Like you're gonna get maybe an audience of thrill seekers, but your company is an insurance company. 
within the boundaries within the boundaries of your company I would try different things and if part of the character of your company is that maybe you do do fun weird things once in a while it's fine but I wouldn't add content to get followers and then to delete that content that's not so good I don't think for SEO but it's just not good in a sort of ethical way <laughs> I just want to build my following, so like you said, this kid's doing stupid things. I just want to build it. I think that would be a good strategy, but you're the business owner of the moment. It's, it's, it, I'm, I would say for my company and my businesses that I've worked with and clients, that's not a good strategy. But for yours, it could be. I'm not saying that, you know, don't ever do that, but I'm just saying that uh, it really depends on your company. Um, you said you want to have followers that actually like your product, mm -hmm. so in, in the future you can sell it. You don't want, for example, a whole bunch of 15 year old kids. Yeah, no, but I'm saying mm -hmm. it's, it's trend label. I'm not going to do that with my eyes. Yeah, it's silly with what product I'm selling. You know, silly. What does it show? I'm just giving a as it, for, you know, for example. <laughs> so, so yes, uh, everyone is in here for different reasons, and it could be that you do reach an audience doing that those tactics, then that's fine. And if that's the audience you're trying to reach, then you did a good job. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is, you don't know until you try it. So maybe it will work to, uh, to, to do different silly, interesting things. There's just so much that we can do. That's the great thing about social media. This is free. You know, if I'm trying to put out five different versions of a flyer, each one of them is going to cost me a thousand dollars to print. I've just spent five thousand dollars to figure out which of those five flyers worked, and then next time maybe that same flyer won't work anymore. I have to try again. So here I could try a bunch of different types of tweets and photos and videos, and then I'll start to see the trends when we get to our screen. That'll help us analyze the trends. I yes. Question. With just one moment, her she was a little quicker on the draw. <laughs> So while we've been, I started my account right here, and I, a follower popped up, and it's a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Are my friends somehow being notified that I have just opened up a Twitter account? Yes, if they're on Twitter, um, and they uploaded their address book, then when Twitter sees that that address has now popped up in Twitter, they will they will be notified. Your friend just joined Twitter. Why not follow them? So that might be that might be good. That might be good or bad. Right. So, question here. So the links that you can do from here and on Google Plus. Mm -hmm. If you have a store on Etsy, mm -hmm. is that a, a link that you can do, or does it have to be like your own website? Uh, that would be under. You can uh, put that. You can put any address you want on this link, or when you tweet, you can put any address. So if I'm about to make a new tweet, and I'm going to say, "Don't forget to check out our shopping cart," blah blah blah, shopping cart. Yes, I could add vmcinc.net slash shopping cart, or etsy.com slash vmcinc. Whatever. I can add any link that I want here uh, on my tweets. Yes. Um, the pro of uploading your address book is that you could potentially get followers a little faster because you might connect with people that are already on Twitter. The con of that is, are you really going to build your business on the backs of your friends and family? Because most likely they're already on Facebook and they're happy there. They're not going to come to Twitter. They're never going to join Twitter. Uh, and again, uh, you have so many potential hundreds of millions of people that you could find as brand new customers that it's, to me personally, it doesn't quite matter to try to connect with friends and family on Twitter, especially if it's a business. If it's for personal and fun and such, sure. But if they're already happy on Facebook, on Instagram, on Tumblr, to convince them to come to another network, probably not. So I added a simple text tweet. Let me show you then we can also add other kinds of tweets. I'm going to go to my company's website. There's a couple of ways to do this. I'm going to go to my company's website and the blog. And let's say I want to share one of the blog posts. So I can add a link to a blog post. For example, the blog checklist part three. 
Um, many sites nowadays have the ability for you to easily share to social media. A button right there built in to share to Twitter, Facebook, Google+. If I click that, then it's going to pop up. Compose your tweet, and here's the link. If your site doesn't have this, many a site might not have this automatically. Uh, I'll explain how to get it in a moment. But if your site doesn't have a simple tweet button like that, you can always still, you know, view the particular content and just copy that link up there. That web address, the URL, the link to that content on the internet and on Twitter. You always have the tweet button at the top right. And I can add the tweet. It might not really have any content, I mean any context, so usually it automatically fills in a picture and the link and a preview and such when your website has the tweet button. See if I click there, it's starting to fill in for me. The subject, the link, who it came from, my, maybe even a picture. If I copy and paste the link, it may not be so full featured. So I would have to go in. Uh, great blog tips from PMD Interactive. And if you've got a connection on Twitter, if one account is connected to another account, it will suggest, do you mean this account? Because when you do, you will automatically link their account on your tweet with their at name. So that short name, the, the username, you can type the at name and their username and then that will be an active link. The point of that is that that other Twitter account will get a notification up here. It'll say VMC Inc. mentioned you in a tweet. So kind of like Google+, Plus where I'm uh, connecting with other people to get their attention, to get likes and follows and such. So I can tweet a link. I can at mention an account. I can mention as many as I want until I run out of space. So yeah, I could mention complete strangers. I actually technically don't need to be connected with other people and they will they will be part of my tweet here. This obviously can be abusive. I can put in a bunch of other people's names here and they will get a notification. You don't want to do this. You don't want to unsolicit, you know, unsolicited tweet to someone especially about something they don't care about. Uh, how can we find out if they care about it? We'll talk about it. But here I, I don't know some of these people and why would I be tweeting this to them? I might, at, at best scenario, get ignored. At worst scenario, I get back some curse words. I don't know. That's right. It's going to be a map. Well, the question is, okay, how do I, how do I get my website to have this tweet button? That's going to depend on the software that you use to create your site. The modern software like WordPress and Wix and Squarespace and stuff often just have a button that says share on social media and then it's, it's active. If you've, if you've made your site on other software, it may or may not have that ability to do it easily. Uh, I remember I've been teaching social media and web design for years and I remember years ago that was the hot thing. How do I add the like button on my website? And you have to go download some code from Facebook and plug it into your site and now it's just a button on WordPress that you turn on to let people share on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. So let's say I'm writing this post and I'm going to use a hashtag. This hashtag is about blogging and tips and, and how to and such. So I'm going to add a hashtag called tips. 
as I start writing the hash mark, the hash symbol, the, the number symbol, which is shift three, as I start writing, it might suggest different hashtags. Mm. Tips for years sevens. Tips, tips for your new YouTube fans. These are hashtags. These are keywords that as soon as I publish this, as soon as I tweet it, will make more sense. But these are like keywords that people are using throughout Twitter. This tweet will be linked to a bunch of other tweets that are also using that hashtag. So let's say I'm going to use tips, I'm going to use hashtag how to, remember no spaces. Because if I write how to, now only how is the hashtag. Notice it's blue, it's a link. I could use hash dash, no that doesn't work either. So it's no spaces, no symbols, you can use numbers, how to one, that's a hashtag. And as I start to write, how to get away with murder? <laughs> How to perfect in languages like Indonesian, Thai. Um, so uh, these are possible. It could be about anything, right? It could. Yeah. It seems like sometimes people just write quirky things. I mean, that probably you press on it and nothing else would come up. Sometimes people have fun with these. Yeah, they write they write quirky or esoteric or ironic things. Um, usually, for us for business, we want to use a hashtag that is actually has activity to get found. But a place where you can find those hashtags and list them. Yeah. There's really, there's really no going. There's not going to be really a website that you want to look up. What's the hot hashtags? Because they just change so often. So one list that is current now might not be current tomorrow. Though I'll get to that about how you can really use hashtags the best. But let me finish my thought here. Let's say I'm going to add a couple of hashtags. You say, well, I'm going to add ten hashtags because I really want to find people. I would not recommend adding ten hashtags. I would recommend adding between one and three. If you do more than three hashtags, you're starting to look like a spammer. Because that's what the spammers do. They put in one quick sentence and a link and 20 hashtags. Because they want to try to reach as many people as possible. You don't want to be a spammer, so you want to keep it within reason up to three. If one is enough, then one is enough. If you get up to three, that's okay, but don't go more than three. Oh, okay. Are we gonna talk more about that? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm crafting this post. I'm gonna add hashtags and then I'll tweet it. And now my 89 followers could have potentially seen that. I got a notification that I just got mentioned on Twitter. And so the point of this is let's say one of my followers is looking at their home screen and on the home screen they see my tweet right there they see hashtags they click on how to and what happens here then the screen changes to show everything that everyone on Twitter is talking about with that hashtag seven steps for getting the perfect quote how to gain 500 Instagram followers how to tomato um, so right here, the very first top one that people might see for the moment is that. And then this one about how to use the blower, funny baby comedy, uh, AT&T increases data caps, how I live coded my most hearted pen. So this is a people all over the world using that hashtag, and it goes on and on and on. And so all of these people and me are connected together. This one tweet is connected to a bunch of other people throughout the world. Well, I noticed in like a news article, and they're making a comment about some, you know, actor or something, or maybe some injustice, and then they have a hashtag and then some word. Are they just uh, made up that day, or how does that? Yeah, anyone can make up a hashtag. 
the problem with that is that if you have seven followers, that hashtag is not going to spread. No one's really going to know about it. Those news outlets or celebrities that have thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of followers, they make up a hashtag and it could become a trend. It could become something that's active. So if I've got a company, Victor's Bakery, and I'm using the hashtag, hashtag Victor's Bakery, but I have seven followers, that hashtag is not really going to do me much good until I build more followers, until I put it on my business card, until I put it in the radio ad, until I put it on the newspaper ad to get attention for it, until I uh, until somehow maybe I get a celebrity to use my hashtag. So yeah, we can make up hashtags, but it doesn't mean that it's going to gain any traction. Yes? So it sounds like it's kind of a, 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 an avenue of directing attention. Is that what you're saying? A hashtag can have many purposes like that one, directing attention, but also to kind of control the conversation in a sense, and kind of to use the analogy of Google Plus communities. All of the people that are in a particular community care about a topic. They're all in one community. We can build a community via hashtags. We use a hashtag and everyone that cares about that topic also uses the hashtag and then all of our links are together and we can all chat together in a sense and so we've got a community. Communities on Google Plus though I still think are way better because they can have moderators. People can weed out the bad posts. This is open. This is the Wild West. Anyone can Anyone can add to the hashtag. Anyone can hijack a hashtag. That happens all the time. Uh, a few years ago, the, the NYPD started a hashtag that was something like hashtag my NYPD. And what they wanted to do was people to share their stories of, you know, their positive stories of police encounters. Well, we know that sometimes there's problems. So people started to hijack that hashtag and put pictures of police brutality and police overreach and all the negative stuff. So their hashtag got away from them. They couldn't control their message like a Google Plus community. So one of the places to really con control your message is Google Plus and Facebook. One of the places you can't really control your message is Twitter, which is good and bad. It might be bad for you because then you put your hashtag how to be cool and then suddenly all of these people take it over to make it very negative. Well that might be bad for you. But because of the nature of Twitter that it's one of the most open social networks, literally Twitter has changed uh, uh, countries. Uh, remember the Arab Spring uh, when people were protesting their government. The government shut down the state-run newspaper, the state-run television, the state-run communication systems. Twitter is not run by any state, so people could access Twitter on their mobile devices illegally and get the message out to, to meet up at the square to protest and it caused nations to be changed. Uh, you know, the internet um, with a hashtag and such. So for good and for bad, Twitter is very open. If you really want to control your message, you want to use Google Plus or Facebook, perhaps. If you want to build a community quickly, Twitter is very good. But the downside could be that your message gets away from you. So if you start a hashtag, and it gets out of hand, you can't delete it because once you put it out there, it's like, it's not here anymore. You Correct. It's out there, like I said earlier, about content that you put on the internet might be there that you don't want or might get away from you. So that's a perfect example with the hashtag. If someone hijacks it, it's hijacked. You can't do anything about it. Start a new hashtag. Question. So when you put hashtag uh, how to, mm -hmm. it shows in uh, chronological um, order, whatever post lasts, how to something. Yes and no. Notice what a hashtag does basically is activates the search box. So up at the very top right, it's searched for the hashtag how to. And now I'm in the search screen. Uh, so that's why I'm saying search is pretty powerful. But the point is, I've searched hashtag or I've clicked on hashtag. It gave me a page of results of how to. And then it's showing, would you like to see the top tweets with hashtag how to? Would you like to see the live tweets, the news, photos, videos, more options with that hashtag? So the default will show you the top ones, which may not be the most recent ones. You know, this one, they all have a, a date on them, right? This one was posted on September 16th. This one was posted 
on September 12th, even though it really doesn't have anything to do with it because it's a promoted tweet. But this one was six minutes ago, nine minutes ago. Yes, you are going to see them in chronological order, but you're going to see them more in chronological order under live. That way it will show you the latest one, also the ads, 32 seconds ago. Uh, how to nestle a photo or artwork into a real sunblock. Spam. Hashtag, 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 freak. Love taco. So that's a spammy one. We, we are not, here comes the winter, we prefer it by knowing it. How to prevent pipes from freezing. Oh, that's good. It has a link, it has a hashtag, maybe I'll click and follow. So if you deleted your tweet, mm -hmm. would you come off of that first? Yeah, your, your tweet was deleted, so it would disappear from there. From but, the but not the hashtag, perhaps. Yeah. Question? I cannot tell you what the best, ha best hashtags are because I don't know what your business is. Well, as a general rule, there's no general rule. Here, it's really going to be very specific. It's, um, I'm assuming, let's say that's why I have a hashtag for the corner. Well, again, it's going to depend. I could obviously wax poetic on what the perfect hashtags and techniques would be for that person, but it really depends on what you're trying to do online. So um, you've got your limitation of one to three hashtags. Think about how people might be searching for something. Because I did it in the method of clicking on a hashtag I know exists. I typed it. But people are going to start to search a hashtag up here without knowing, without you knowing what it is. So you have to think about what if someone is searching for, uh, you know, make me rich. So hashtag make me rich. So you have to think about in terms of what people would be searching for to pick the right hashtags. <clears throat> and it really depends on your product and your audience and what you're trying to get across. Now, uh, we're, in, we're, in, we're in need of a break at the moment, so uh, right after the break we will go on. It's 3 o'clock, we'll be back at 3.11, we'll talk some more hashtags and other cool stuff.